Yeah, and thanks everybody for joining us uh, this afternoon for this information session um, on the Graduate Diploma in Web Technologies. Uh, my name is Ray Walsh, as Anya said, and I'm the chair of the program. Um, so for those of you who will be joining us in the, the coming academic year, I will have an opportunity to meet and have a chat or maybe a cup of coffee at some stage as well. Um, so the title, Graduate Diploma in Web Technologies, is the first thing just to notice, it's a graduate diploma. Um, so the the uh, understanding there is that you would have an undergraduate degree or equivalent qualification before applying for the course. And the good thing, because it's a conversion course, is that your primary degree uh, is, um, it doesn't have to be in IT. So you can have any background whatsoever in your primary degree and uh, you can still apply for the Graduate Diploma in Web Technologies to, to sort of transfer your skills or convert your skills over to a, a more IT-based um, uh, curricula. Um, and web technologies then sort of speaks for itself, so everybody knows what the web is, and you know sort of about HTML and and web pages. You've you've seen bits and pieces like you know just in in passing on Google, etc. And we're going to, I suppose, demonstrate to you like I mean how how easy it is to to get involved in that. So indicatively, what I'm going to start with is just giving an overview of the course, giving you some general information about it. And then for specific, specifics, we'll leave lots of time at the end so that we can have a, a proper Q&A. So feel free to ask anything you, you, you uh, um, that comes up right off the top of your head, whether it's curricular related or just about going to university in general, you know, we can, we can help you out with giving you some assist on that. Okay, so Graduate Diploma in, in Web Technologies, GDWT is what we're referring to it internally. And this is the structure of the program. Uh, and the structure is basically it's split across two semesters. You have a semester one and semester two. You spend some time on campus or, or, or off campus if, you, if you're going to be doing some remote learning associated with it. Um, but for the most part, it's split up in such a way that half of the content is, split in, in, is delivered in semester one and half of the content is delivered in semester two. You can see the, the uh, titles of the modules that are delivered on the program here, Introduction to Programming, which will be through um, Python. And um, Python is a very good uh, starting language to learn how to program. And we assume that you have no knowledge of programming or IT for that matter, uh, when you start. We, we start ab initio. Uh, which means that we give you all of the information, the background reading about it, we give you demonstrations of how to program, we provide you with all the tools, and you start from zero uh, knowledge and be able to write actual programs that will run um, uh, standalone programs and also through, through uh, web interfaces um, by the end of the course. Uh, web development is, is the key thing, like web technology is all about the World Wide Web. So you have two, two courses on web development, um, in one in the first semester, one in the second semester. And it starts to introduce you to the, the structure of the World Wide Web, um, uh, the, the building blocks of it, the tools and technologies that we use to provide e-commerce solutions through the World Wide Web. So provide designing nice interfaces on, on web pages and how to create a database. We have an introduction to databases course. So that how would you link that to the back? For example, if you wanted to create your own sort of fan club uh, and you want to have a fan page and then store all the information associated with, with paraphernalia, et cetera, in a database, then we could show you how to build something like that with a, a front end web page, but adding information and deleting information from a database uh, via that web technology. Um, collaboration, collaboration and innovation is another course which shows you how to actually do run projects, you know, how to build teams, uh, what's best ways to structure it, about sprints and getting organized in, in, uh, in you know, your, own, your own time. So if it's all about time management, people management and people skills, etc. And then project, the project is, is, is sort of the coup de grace that you would do at the end of your um, web development and web technologies courses. So it sort of takes all of the stuff that you've learned over the year um, and uh, it, it gives you a chance to showcase that by creating a, a little demonstration project that you can show to your friends and, and to your assessors and, and it, it's part of a portfolio that you can, you can present to potential employers at the end um, to say, well, look, I've learned all of these skills. So that's the structure of the program spread across um, two semesters, as, as I said, and most of the, most of the modules are, are equally sized in terms of seven and a half credits, but the, the project itself is 15 credits. That's worth uh, uh, tr uh, basically twice the size of an individual module. Um, and that's because the project gives you a chance to showcase all the skills that you're learning uh, within the web technologies course. The delivery of the program across those two semesters then 
um, are done in that format, but it's a full-time study option. So full-time means that you're expected to devote all of your time to this type of, of initiative there to, to uh, achieving the graduate diploma in web technologies. Uh, there's four modules in the first semester, which roughly equates to 10 hours of contact where you'll be dealing with lectures and tutorials and labs. Uh, your project planning is in the first semester, we will be about trying to find out what your project is going to be about, um, and be even doing some team building, etc. And in the second semester, then you would actually do the development work, which would be more like eight hours per week, probably be spent on on, on, on trying to do the background research, um, building little bits and pieces and testing them and plugging them together. And eventually over, over the, the duration of the semester, you would end up with a, a fully fledged project. Um, and these are indicative, like, you know, that it's so many hours per week in terms of contact hours with your, with your lectures and, and your teaching assistants. Uh, and then in, in May 2021, all going well, you would have a project demonstration which showcases, as I said, the fruits of your, your learning um, and, and what you've learned either individually or within teams doing, doing projects on, on the various courses. Um, and then there's usually we spend you know a day where we just you know all sort of demonstrate those projects and they get they get assessed by the by the uh, the supervisors your individual supervisors for your project and you're not you're obviously you're not left to to um, have to figure all that out for yourself you'll be giving a, a project supervisor to look over look over uh, the, the your approach and make sure you don't go down any cul-de-sacs and and if you you have meet any big sticking points get advice as to how to get around that best like you know and encourage you to to um to get the best solution for for your your deliverable for your demonstration and your presentation um so i mentioned earlier that we'll be doing a course on programming and and just let you know that python is the programming languages as i mentioned and the type of programs you, you start off are very very simple as, as i said we we assume uh, assume that you have no prior programming knowledge whatsoever. So this is a program, for example, in, in Python, which, which uh, adds two numbers together, you know, and, and that's, that's the building blocks of, of programming. Another program which show you how to do is how to print out your own name, you know, as part of, so you run it and it prints out your own name. So, you know, hello Aoife, hello Ray, hello Anne, whatever that is. So you start with the very basics and then we show you a little bit about, about, about iteration, you know, and about maybe creating a loop so that you can do something multiple times. Very simple techniques, but they're the building blocks of programming and it's not rocket science. You know, it, it's, it's actually, anybody can program. Actually, I, I'm a firm believer that everybody can program, but that, that programming is just, it's just logic. And we are our logical people. We're humans, like humans are, are logical. We deal, we deal in counting in 10, we've got 10 fingers and we're, we're innately logical. So. Programming actually comes naturally to most people, um, but people think that it's this huge, you know, scary thing that, 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 that you need a special skill set for. Nope, you don't. You just need to be human. So programming is, is, is something that you learn and you'll have a capability with, with the Python programming language by the end of the course. Uh, I've just um, extracted some of the, the learning outcomes because when we're designing these courses, like the, all of the individual modules have a big long list of learning outcomes that are associated with them. So I just said I'd pick off some, a snapshot of some of them uh, and just share them with you on, on the screen so that you could get a feel for some of the things that you'll be able to say to employers. Well, actually, I learned how to assess different tools and technologies for collaborative tasks because we do a whole module on that, you know, and, and how, to, how to do team building and how to structure projects. Um, so you will either lead or participate in a team, you know, in terms of project work. Uh, you will learn about internet applications and, and how to deploy them, you know, so how to actually get something up and running on the web as a live uh, application. Uh, managing software projects, how to program with, 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 with uh, Python, how to program specifically for the World Wide Web and how does the World Wide Web um, how does it work? Like, I mean, how, how does, what are its constituent parts and how do you interact with it, like in terms of uh, becoming a web programmer? And we look at data interoperability and data governance, which is very current at the moment, like in, in, and the data science, uh, data standards are, are, are uh, something that's, that, that's uh, very popular. It has a high profile in the European Commission, etc. And I have a background in standards development for, for data governance as well. So we'll, we'll be doing something in, in that space as well because it's an interesting topic. And we look at the e economic impact of ICT standardization in terms of, in general, learn about the industry, uh, about uh, what makes the ICT industry really tick and, and how we're able to create these platforms and solutions for sharing data all over the world. And they all seem to work. And it doesn't matter what your background is and what your culture is, you know, what your language is, et cetera, they all seem to work. And how does that, how do we manage that? Well, actually standardization um, and ICT standards are, is a big part of that. So we get to do a, a course around data standards as well. 
Um, okay, so you, we, everybody gets a copy of this, uh, so um, you can just read through that at your leisure afterwards. Uh, it's an NFQ level nine, so a National Framework Qualification level nine course, which means that he, with, if you have no prior IT experience uh, coming into this, then it's a level nine qualification to achieve the outcomes of this course. The web technology projects, they, they also can be used as a standing, as, as, a, as a stepping stone to further projects and further research even, if you want to go on to do maybe a master's or a PhD uh, in, in, a, in a, an academic environment uh, with, 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 with DCU or any other university for that matter. Um, they are inherently very popular courses because it's not just about reskilling and upskilling, but it actually gives people a chance to do an, an about turn. And maybe they've done, they started off uh, in one direction. And now at this stage in their career, after maybe a few years of, 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 of doing one thing, they just they want to change, want, want a fresh look at things. And this gives you an opportunity to maybe completely change your career and direction towards, uh, towards IT. And the type of um, skills that you would have after this, this uh, undertaking this course will be uh, computer programming, web development, management also in terms of projects, etc. And you might be suited towards sales and marketing with an ICT flavor because you'll have that background in programming and web development now and it gives you a, a more rounded knowledge and a better holistic view of what the ICT uh, scenarios are in, in, uh, in industry and, uh, and definitely from an academic perspective. And we, these skills are not just, we're not just picking them out of the air saying, oh, look, we've got an expertise in this, so we might as well just deliver a course in that. It's, it's based on technology skills 2022. Because there's a shortage of skills in this area, we're actually filling that gap, which means that you are very employable. And the likes of companies that have previously uh, benefited from our graduates from these type of conversion courses are, are listed here. So the likes of Ericsson's, Mary Lynch, Lucent Technologies, etc., and more. But you just put a, put a snapshot of them, and you can expect to go on to 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 uh, to uh, working in, in companies like that, or you know, it, depending on what you're doing, because you're open up to, you're opening up lots of avenues. You could be working with the likes of Twitter or Google, or Facebook, etc. Like you know, there's lots of other companies that that are looking for these type of of um, uh, conversion courses to provide. Um, uh, employees for the skill shortage that they have within their own within their own uh, companies uh, and who should apply then is the last thing like I mean why uh, you know if you're trying to make up your mind is well maybe I'm not suited for this course well actually for the most part for, for the ones I've been reviewing so far the applications I've been reviewing so far like a lot of people are, are are very suited to this they have a undergraduate degrees in business or in law or in languages or in health or science and they want to do a change so that they've gone more towards a computing or an ICT flavor um, for their for their career and this reskilling um, to to uh, close the skills gap in the ICT sector is is a, is a very popular way of doing that at the moment, and it covers the skills that are delivered in the course covers the complete uh, economy, like every sector. Like I mean, you can get jobs in ICT which are agriculture based or finance based or manufacturing based. ICT is all pervasive at the moment, and really, it's very hard to do a job nowadays without having ICT skills. Um, so it's. Uh, it sets you up really for, for, future, for future career moves. And then there's a snapshot then of uh, the fact that this is a particularly high demand for graduates to have the skills, computer technologies, and to solve practical problems and give, provide solutions to business and industry. And also it gives you an opportunity to, to progress further in education if you want to get further education and build on a graduate diploma and maybe go on to a, a higher diploma or a master's or maybe even a PhD in research. Um, as a starting point if you, if you find that you're really interesting, really interested in the area. So that's a sort of synopsis of what the course is about and the types of skills that you would, you would learn. Um, uh, DCU is a very, uh, very um, open and accessible uh, university for doing this type of course. We've got a really great uh, cohort of staff with, with, with the excellent skills for delivering these type of courses and good mentors and good project support and supervisors for, for projects as well. And they're really helpful and friendly, like, you know, so it's a good environment to come to do a course like this. Um, and, and we'd be delighted to have you. So if you think this, some of this makes sense to you, or it's, it's, it sounds like you have, might have, might be able to get a bit excited or passionate about doing something like this, then you know, this maybe is the course for you. So with that said, now, if you want to contact me directly, my name is Ray Walsh, as I said. If you have any questions, we can deal with them now at this stage. If you want to apply for the course and, and you haven't seen this information before, the, uh, the springboard uh, courses.ie site uh, has a link here at the end of this presentation. 
a browser and it'll direct you to the apply here button and uh, we can take it from there. And eventually then I'll be able to have a look at your application and say, yep, you've got a good undergraduate degree and it's in arts or it's in science and you're, you're want to change now to ICT and that's brilliant. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to wel welcome you on the course in, uh, in October.